Turkish Greek Cypriot uh, relationship uh, also. Uh, about your last question, uh, I didn't really get the question there. You said, you know, talking to difficult, difficult actors, that, does that put Turkey in opposition or in conflict what with the U.S.? Or? One, sorry. one is that Turkey is sometimes presented as a, as a U.S. proxy in terms of a model for Middle Eastern development. That's a few years ago. And now you have uh, Turkey talking to Hamas and Sudan and other groups. Perhaps the United States doesn't talk to so much. Is there something you're trying to do for the, U the U.S. in those relationships? Well, not directly for the U.S., obviously, but, you know, there is a convergence of interests at times, and that's, that's welcome. Uh, you know, as I said, because of uh, this kind of political economic necessity, is, I mean, Turkey cannot remain indifferent to, you know, what's happening in Iraq, what's happening in Iran, what's happening in the Middle East. I mean, take the example of the Middle East peace process. I mean, we, we know that it's such a critical, difficult, yet vital issue, the Middle East peace process, the Palestine issue that you can have success, say, in Iraq, in Iran, which we hope all we will, uh, but unless you resolve the Palestine issue, uh, it, it remains a potent area of conflict. And, you know, much of the hatred that, or, or bigotry and prejudice that we see, uh, you know, around the world between Israelis and Arabs, between Muslims and the West, between America and the Muslim world, uh, you know, they do become, I um, mean, huge issues. The Pew uh, research uh, just show uh, that about 50 or 60 percent of Christians around the world still harbor very negative views of Muslims and vice versa. And Muslims harbor very, I mean, that's almost like half of world's population harbor very negative views of each other. And if you look, like break it down like to some specific issues, what are the issues that fuel this, this negative sentiments and stereotypes, the Palestine issue comes up very high in the list. Uh, therefore, you have to pay attention uh, because it affects, you know, everybody. Uh, and there, I think the, 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 the policy line has been clear from the very beginning uh, that, you know, without Hamas, how are you going to have peace uh, or some sort of a process, again, uh, in place in, uh, in, in Palestine? It, it, it hasn't worked. You know, but what, what has happened over the last three years now, since 2006, when Hamas was elected, uh, all the isolation, etc., hasn't worked and made, made things even worse. Uh, uh, we do this, obviously, for, for Turkey. I mean, that's a typical line, obviously, you'll expect from me. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, it, I mean, I think there is a greater convergence of Turkish and U.S. strategic interests uh, with the Obama administration um, uh, in the sense that uh, some of the key issues that, for example, President Obama has identified uh, for his foreign policy uh, I'll mention four, for example, in relation to our region, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Palestine. And we know there are difficult times ahead in all of the four areas. Uh, but they are all also concern Turkey. Uh, and uh, there is a greater, as I said, understanding convergence of both substance and style in terms of how we can work this out together, how, uh, what kind of a political structure, for example, we need uh, in Iraq after 2011. Uh, when the U.S. troops are withdrawn, uh, what kind of a uh, regional system we need, uh, you know, vis-à-vis -vis the Iranian nuclear program, and uh, what kind of cooperation we can develop vis-à-vis -vis the Palestine issue. I think these are all um, kind of common interests, uh, and, uh, and I think they, they, they will only strengthen the U.S.-Turkish relations in the years to come. Antony for Hurriyet Daily News. Uh, actually, while you are on the subject in the Cyprus issue, uh, Mr. Suat Kınıklıoğlu uh, <coughs> wrote a piece in The Guardian, and uh, he basically argued that either this year these talks uh, will, will be successful or never. Uh, is this an official stance of ATP? <coughs> and the second question is, if this is which this question was asked to actually uh, President Mehmet Ali Talat while he was here, and he said he has no idea uh, such a discourse. And my question is, if such uh, never occurs, which we don't hope that, but what do you think about the EU and Turkey relationship and other relationships would, would be affected? And the second question is, 
uh, you said that we believe the sanctions will not work on Iran. And so that means that in such a scenario in the UN Security Council, Turkey will not back such sanctions because Turkey doesn't believe it, it will work. Thank you. This is Tirin Dalolu with Haber Turk. It's a Turkish daily newspaper. I just want to follow up on the Iranian issue and I uh, want to go back two weeks ago. Uh, I guess it was two or three weeks ago at the UN under the leadership of President Obama. The UN Security Council had agreed to build a nuclear weapon free world. And Turkey, as a non permanent member of the UN Security Council, agreed to it, and Mr. Prime, uh, Mr. Erdogan, as the Turkish Prime Minister, resided at that event. Two days later, at G20, uh, at Pittsburgh, uh, the leaders of the United States, United Kingdom, and France uh, unveiled a secret uh, Iranian nuclear facility. On uh, the following days, the Turkish Prime Minister again held a uh, press briefing at New York, he repeated what he said at Brookings, and he said that he doesn't believe uh, that Iran wants to build a nuclear weapon, but he believes actually that this is a peaceful uh, nuclear program. And he also underlined that the world goes to bed with the Iranian issue and wakes up with it and continued talking about the Israelis' uh, nuclear uh, weapon capability. So with all these, I'm just asking you to close the logic. Uh, are you suggesting that Turkey is laying out a priority list in terms of fighting against, um, maybe not fighting, but just uh, dealing with the nuclear uh, weapon issue and uh, want to have a parallel with the Israelis' uh, nuclear weapon capability if they want to cooperate with the rest of the P5 plus 1 on the nuclear weapon, on the Iranian nuclear weapon program. Thank you. Uh, about Cyprus, um, you know, we are doing everything to make it succeed. Um, and if you look at what Turkey has done since 2004 when the Anand plan was put to a referendum uh, on both sides of the island, uh, it was really a remarkable. I mean, it was a silent revolution, not silent, visible. I mean, very, you know, it was a major change in, in, in policy vis-a-vis uh, -vis Cyprus. Uh, it was not easy. And if you remember, the expectation at that time was that the Turkish side will uh, turn down the referendum and the Greek side will say yes. And every calculation at that time was based on this assumption. Um, it turned out to be just opposite. And what happened? The Greek side was accepted into the EU. The Turkish side continued to be penalized. And the European Union uh, not only, I think, violated a moral principle, but one of their basic principles in the EU uh, acquis. That is, you don't accept a member into the European Union if that member or that candidate country has a territorial dispute with another country. Now, the, the, at least the Turkish Cypriot side problem has become part of uh, the EU in a sense, and now it's presented as an obstacle to Turkey, that unless you uh, solve the Cyprus issue uh, that has opened the ports and you know, applied Ankara Protocol, etc., uh, you will not uh, have any chance of getting into the EU. Now, I mean, my personal answer, and I think that that's been the official line also, assume that we open the ports uh, to the Greek Cypriot side, and we recognize fully the Greek Cypriot side. Uh, will that really increase our chances of getting into the EU? Because you have all these other signs saying that even if you resolve the Turkish issue, I mean the, the Cyprus issue, well, you are too big as a country. Uh, you will have, you know, more MPs in the, in the European Parliament than the German and the French. Uh, your economy, yeah, is big, and, you know, it's good that we have good, this good energy relationship with you, but you may have a monopoly on our energy future. I mean, you know, or you, know, you, you have 3.5 or 4 million Turks living in Europe. They have not really integrated fully into, into European societies. Uh, what are we going to do with the 70 million of these Turks? I, I mean, you see, I mean, there is one argument after another. There is no end to it. And I, I think we're coming to a point where, especially on the Cyprus issue, Turkey is at a point where I, I think